Hi everybody, uh, you are welcome to our talk today on lung cancer. And let us start by the answering the question, which is the common cancers. Generally, the common cancer in female are breast cancers, uh, while in male, the common cancer is colorectal cancer in Saudi Arabia, for example, while in USA, the common cancer is prostate, then lung, then colorectal cancer. But the most important thing that lung cancer is a deadly one, in, both in male and female, so it is the most dangerous one. Now we would like to go over the common risk factor of cancer, I mean the lung cancer. The most important one is cigarette smoking and because cigarette smoking have some sort of substance called polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons and these are the carcinogenic agents that are found in the cigarette smoking. Then after that we have radiotherapy. Those patients who have, for example, Hodgkin lymphoma or breast cancer and they who are treated with radiation uh, they might develop uh, I mean, lung cancer later on in their life. After that, we have environmental toxins like asbestos, which was used in the roof and uh, water pipes, but now is not used, and uh, also is a risk factor for lung cancer. Moreover, we have random, which is a gas found in the ground in some areas in the wall. So sometimes you may get this, uh, I mean, gas or toxins within the ground, maybe in your house or area around you. So also it is a risk factor for lung cancer. The bad thing about the presentation of uh, lung cancer is that it will be after advancing disease. And even though that the symptoms will not be straightforward, it will be in any specific like cough, dyspnea, or hemoptysis. So you need to do X-ray or imaging technique and to see the, the findings. And most probably in the findings, you will find some sort of nodules like this. And I will talk about it in the next slide. Most thing which uh, will raise the suspicion of uh, lung cancer that uh, presence of primary nodules as you see here in this box and this is why it's nodule is called coin lesion it's just like coin round like this but the most important thing that most of this I mean nodule might be prime might be benign condition so you have to compare it with a previous x-ray or stuff like that then you can take a biopsy to be sure if it is benign or malignant one. As I have said before that pulmonary nodule, benign one, are very important. You have to be sure it might be due to granuloma in 80% of the cases, like tuberculosis and others. I will talk about it in a minute. Then after that, we have hamartomas, which is mixed tissues found in the lung. Like when you take a biopsy, you will find lung tissues mixed with cartilage tissues and some sort of calcification here and there. Okay, granulomatous nodules may be caused by fungi or mycobacterium tuberculosis, fungi like histoplasmosis or coccidiomycosis, and they are found in different areas in USA like here, Mississippi or Ohio River, Southeast California for coccidiomycosis. Then mycobacterium tuberculosis also is a cause of uh, benign nodules. Okay, this is a morphological classification of lung cancer, but it can work as clinical one. So you can classify carcinoma into small cell carcinoma and then a small cell carcinoma. And the small cell carcinoma will be just like this, very small dark blue cells. And everything rather than that, it will be in any small cell carcinoma. Small cell carcinoma is fast growing tumor and with early metastasis, so it cannot be treated surgically. It will be treated by chemotherapy. So to remember this point, you have to remember that small cell carcinoma are very small to, for the surgeon to find it. Also, small cell carcinoma is found in a smoker only in the smoker, unlike that of uh, non-small cell carcinoma, it, found, it was found in those who are smoker and non-smoker. The last thing and very important thing that the, the small cell carcinoma is, have very poor prognosis, unlike that of uh, non-small cell carcinoma has good prognosis. Sometimes I mean the small cell carcinoma can be treated surgically by resection. And also, as I have said before, it is found or uh, it will be found in the smoker and non-smoker individuals. Small cell carcinoma are poorly differentiated neuroendocrine tumors, so it produces because it is a neuroendocrine, it has neuroendocrine origin, it has some sort of production of different type of hormones. I will talk about it later on in the, I mean, in a minute later. Then also it is uh, found in male, mainly smoker male, because uh, female who are a smoker have another type of uh, lung cancer. I will talk about it later on. And also it is found in the central part of the lung, it's not near the, I mean the bronchi, it is just the, uh, in the periphery. And this is, uh, I mean, histopathology for the small cell can carcinoma, and you see that they are dark, small, round, blue cells. 
Small cell carcinoma can present with paranebulastic syndrome. It can produce ACTH or ADH or uh, antibodies. Yeah, let us start by the first one. ACTH production will result in Cushing syndrome. Like trunk, uh, clinically, will present like progressive obesity and hyperglycemia, mainly here truncal obesity. We will talk about it later on. ADH production called uh, SIADA or a syndrome of inappropriate ADH. Clinically, this will result in hyponatremia and confusion. While antibody production, it will give a syndrome called limper eaton syndrome. It is just like uh, or some sort of have similarity to myphenia gravis with, I mean, weakness. So here the antibodies will be against presynaptic calcium channel in the neurons, and it will block the acetylcholine. So the patient will present as weakness uh, or muscle weakness. Many small cell cancer are heterogeneous group. There is nothing common in them, rather than being many small, small cell like this, blue round small cell, as I have told you before. So this can be squamous cell carcinoma, adenocarcinoma, large cell carcinoma, bronchioalveolar carcinoma, this is a very rare one, and carcinoid tumor. So let us go over them one by one. The first type of tumor which I will talk about it in the group of uh, non small cell carcinoma are squamous cell cancer. Here, the, you will find that the tumor is centrally located. If this is a trachea, this is a branching, you will find it here, hilar, uh, I mean uh, tumor. And this point is similar to that of a small cell cancer, as if you remember. Also, it is common in male smoker, and this is also findings in, in small cell cancer. Also, it can produce hormone, which is parathyroid hormone here, just like small cell cancer, producing different types of hormones. The most important thing about the pathological findings in squamous cell carcinoma are the feature of squamous cell cancer generally, like keratin production, and you will find keratin just like this pills, uh, rounded like this, and also you will find some sort of intracellular bridges. If this is a cell and another cell, you will find some sort of bridges like this, and it's called intercellular desmosomes. For the production of hormone, it will produce parathyroid hormone, and the Presentation of parathyroid increase, parathyroid hormone is, but is hypercalcemia. And the hypercalcemia clinical feature are feature of stone and bone pain and groans and psychotic uh, overstimulation. So the patient will present as uh, pains in the bone, abdominal pain, confusion, and stuff like that. Second one in the group is adenocarcinoma. And adenocarcinoma is some sort of tumor that producing gland like like this. Here you see that the cells are being just like gland, or sometimes you may find signet ring like this one here, yeah? or you may find some sort of mucus outside. So when you find these findings, I mean one of the three, this is most probably adenocarcinoma. The second thing you have to put it at the back of your mind that adenocarcinoma, the lung is commonly associated with non smoker, unlike that of squamous cell carcinoma and small cell carcinoma, which are common in smoker one. But in female, you may find it in, who are smoker. So if you find the female smoker, most probably this is adenocarcinoma, unlike male. Also, it is found in the peripheral areas of the lung. It's not just a hyalur, it's a peripheral. So this is uh, uh, some point which differentiate adenocarcinoma from squamous cell carcinoma and small cell cancer. Let us go over large cell carcinoma, which is poorly differentiated cancer. And the most important thing under the microscope is that this type of cancer have large cell, which is not fitting uh, glandular structure or squamous differentiation uh, or a small cell. So, first of all, you have to look for a small round cell. If you you will not you did not find it, you go for the glandular structure, not find it, and mucus secretion not found it. Squamous differentiation, that is to say, intercellular bridges and trails of keratin, not found it. This is most probably large cell carcinoma. The second thing it is found also in a smoker, and this is some sort of similarity to small cell and squamous cell carcinoma. But it can be found peripherally or centrally, and it has very poor prognosis. Moreover, it secretes no hormone. So alveolar carcinoma is a variant of uh, uh, adenocarcinoma, so it has some sort of feature just like adenocarcinoma in being common in non smoker and arises in a peripheral areas. And also, the most important thing you have to put it to the back of your mind that it is originated from goblet cell and it is called mucinous type so it has two types number one mucinous type which is coming from the this is a goblet cell this is a goblet cell uh, which produce normally mucus so here it will be a mucus type 
The second one is non-mucus secreting type, which is coming from the Clara cell, which is also called uh, type 2 pneumocytes. If this is a uh, pneumocytes, here you will find this is pneumocytes type 1 and type 2. This is from type 2. Also, you have to put at the back of your mind this type of cancer presented as loper pneumonia. So he, the patient is coming and saying that uh, he has been treated as a uh, loper pneumonia for a long period of time and even the x-ray shows consolidation. And this is because the tumor will block this bronchioles and the alveoli. So uh, the area will be very good for infection. Also, the last thing you have to know that it has very good and excellent prognosis. It can be treated surgically or radiotherapy or sometimes you may need to give chemotherapy. Okay, this is the last type of uh, tumor in this heterogeneous group. It's called carcinoid tumor and it's coming from neuroendocrine cells. And it is well differentiated type of neuroendocrine cells. Unlike that of small cell carcinoma, if you remember, it's coming from the same origin, but it is poorly differentiated. Also, it is chromogranin positive uh, tumor, and this is a feature of all neuroendocrine tumor. It's positive for chromogranin stain, and this type of tumor also common in non-smokers, and it's rarely presented as a carcinoid syndrome because you know there is difference between carcinoid tumor and carcinoid syndrome. If you remember, in carcinoid syndrome there is feature of secretion of serotonin and flushing the area and stuff like that. And this is common in GIT tumor, unlike that of uh, carcinoid tumor of the lung. What are the complications of lung uh, tumor? First of all, you have a pleural effusion. And you, to be sure that this is a malignant pleural effusion, you can do a tab aspiration and then send it for cytology. And you will find that there is cells which have a feature of malignancy, like being irregular uh, cells with, uh, I mean, increased nuclear to cytomalizing ratio and other feature of um, cytological feature of malignancy. Also, uh, you may find phrenic nerve compression due to infiltration by this malignant cell and clinically you will find that the diagram is paralyzed and there is feature of dyspnea on x-ray. You will find that the affected side of the diaphragm on x-ray will be elevated like this while the other side is normally down. Also, you can do what is called the sniff test and in the, in the sniffing and then you do x-ray in the sniffing time you will find that normally you have to find pulse of the diaphragm is going downward like this one, like the normal one. In this case, you will find that there is unilateral, I mean, going down. The other one it will be just like uh, upside. And this means that there is uh, diaphragmatic paralysis. Also, sometimes the tumor may reach recurrent laryngeal nerve and compress it, resulting in hoarseness of voice. Pancos tumor is a unique type of lung cancer affecting the superior part or upper part of the lung here is the abscess and involving the superior sulcus. So subclavian nerve might be obstructed, presenting as arm edema. And you have to uh, put at the back of your mind uh, superior vena cava syndrome, which is also a complication of lung cancer, may present with arm edema. But with arm edema, you will find that there is edema in the neck. I mean, the engorgement of blood supply to the uh, that is found in the neck and in the facial edema. Here also you may find shoulder pain uh, from the compression of the nerve supply to this area. Also compression to the sympathetic nerve chain presented as Horner syndrome with the triad of meiosis, ptosis, and anhydrosis. Meiosis, it means that the pupil will be constricted. Ptosis, it means that there is drop of the eyelid. Anhydrosis, no sweating in the affected part of the face. The lung cancer have a predilection to metastasis to the adrenal gland without any symptoms and signs, unlike the other organ, like brain and bone and liver here. You will find, for example, in the brain there is headache, uh, seizures and stuff like that, bone. You will find pathological fracture in the liver. You may find jaundice, hepatomegaly and stuff like that. We came to the area of metastatic uh, lung cancer. I mean here, the, it is a secondary tumor that coming from other organ and they are more commoner than that of primary lung cancer. So if you have a lung cancer, first of all, you have to think of secondaries before you think of primary lung cancer. And it's coming from breast cancer, colorectal cancer, and other GIT cancers. Also, they are multiple lesions. It's not uh, one nodule. It will be 
more than one nodule and it will be bilaterally and even the nodule will be irregular like this and more than one centimeter. These most probably secondaries.